<laughs> yeah, the whole stage is mic'd. <laughs> Hello, y'all hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Welcome to the, uh, I guess this would be the second round of the inaugural city council. Uh, first term is coming to a close on the 20th. That is uh, Saturday next week. So the elections will be open. The ballots will be open until that point, roughly around 7 p.m. Eastern on the 20th. Now, we have uh, organized with the, you know, uh, graceful uh, assistance and direction of uh, Miss Thoroughbred over there, Siobhan, uh, this debate so y'all can better inform yourselves about the various candidates, their platforms, their opinions, uh, and you can just get them in the flesh and ask them something, put them on the spot. Uh, feel free once we get to questions. We're going to just start off pretty basic. Uh, I'd just like to get each person up here talk uh very briefly about like your party and your overall platform let's keep it in like a you know 30 second type elevator pitch uh and then we'll move on to some more substantive questions i would ask that you guys be respectful as you can obviously you may feel the need to yell things out at different times but let's try to keep some level of decorum all right uh, and with that we i guess we'll start with the uh, incumbent mr mayor uh, mr thoroughbred Hi everyone, uh, I'm Maximilian Thoroughbred. I am the current mayor of Los Santos. I was fortunate enough to be voted in the last time by a lot of you in the crowd. Um, <clears throat> I've spoken to many of you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, most of you know what I'm about, but for the sake of the elevator pitch, I'll hit you now with the facts. Uh, 15 minutes after taking office, I lowered taxes across the board. Uh, and after being gifted the, the ability to do so by the state, I lowered them even further. Uh, I stand for less work, more pay, meaning less time on the back of a sanitation truck or in a G6 truck, uh, and more pay at the end of the, the shift that you are doing to ensure that you are able to enjoy your lives in Los Santos, uh, not slaving away day in, day out. Uh, this pay raise applies to not only clean workers of the city, but uh, also doctors, EMS, uh, even the police department, um, and... That is what I will be operating on moving forward. I believe that the state has a large amount of money, and I believe that that large amount of money should be reinvested into all of you. Thank you. Do I just take the stage now? I think so. Yes, I did. <laughs> Yo, I don't know what I'm going to say, dude. Hello. I'm Michael Simone. I'm the current deputy mayor. Uh... The TLDR is, I do plan on bringing back fishing, because a lot of people do want that. Uh, but at the same time, I also do feel like with the tools that we've not been given, there is a possibility for us to improve pay and help out people across the board. There is still some problem areas that we do want to improve. Uh, other than that, I do feel like as what we have done as the mayor's office is a pretty good baseline and we do want to keep that going we want to make sure that everyone is being treated equally and we try to look after everyone as well he's so nervous so, that's, that's about it <coughs> he's so nervous it's cute oh what's going on guys my name's little tugs also known as danny Miller. Danny Miller, my government name, dude. That's why I like little tugs. Um, you know, I'm just a 19-year-old with a dream. And I think, you know, instead of using all kind of boring words, my platform pretty simple. If a 19-year-old can understand it, then probably everyone can, dude. You know, it mean like you don't need the political speak. Um, I want to keep the police department accountable 
And I have shown that I can do this because I beat them back to back in court. And the first one that make them pay me money for trying to put the false charges on me. Love Maddie's I new want character. The police this is not his, a new character. <laughs> they talk to you. They don't treat you like a piece of shit and assume you're just a dirty criminal, dude. You people matter. He's 19. And they work for you, not the other way around. And that include the government, dude. And that would include me if you vote for me, dude. I also want to see um, good pay for everybody. But I don't want us all to be Yo! tied down to this day-night bullshit. There should be maximum amount of time. Everyone work every week on their job. Let's say 20 hour. And then once you're done, that's it. So then you don't have to be competing with people that do rhyme 80 hours and you can pick and choose when you work. I also want to bring representation to the sewer people because there's a lot of people that live down there and the government trying to lock it down. And that's not fair, dude. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, I think I'm going to piss myself, dude. You're good, man. You're good. <laughs> Hello, Los Santos. I'm Archie Archer. And I'm so grateful I was able to get this far. And I want to thank everyone I have met for their support. I am humbly dropping out from this race. And I am endorsing what? Maximilian Thoroughbred. Oh my God. I truly want what is best for this city. And I've come to the Let's conclusion go! that Max's vision aligns with mine and he is more experienced. <laughs> Having a second term will be more beneficial and productive for the city. I hope to have the chance to run again in the future. And I want to thank you all for your support again. I'll resume my civilian oversight board duties. And I look forward to continuing working with Max and the Council of Eight to help better the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Archie. <clears throat> Oh. Oh, Archie, I didn't make you quit, did I? No, Stanley. <laughs> no. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Archie, please. Wait, can they hear me in the crowd? Yeah, even when you're whispering. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All we're, right. We're mic'd uh, up. <laughs> we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do like, yeah, if y'all ever done like fantasy football, uh, we'll do the snake method. So uh, first up for this question will be Mr. Miller. Uh, so the question to all candidates one at a time is going to be, um, how will you affect change in the upcoming term, uh, to ensure the stable growth of both our city and our values? So what are your primary things that you would change that you think, uh, will stimulate growth and promote good values in the city? Mr. Miller first. Oh, Mr. Miller. At least Mr. Miller. <laughs> Sounds about just saying like <laughs> he made him first. Almost. That's so fucked up on that. Um, I already <laughs> touched on maximum amount that you can work a week and just being able to choose when you can work. Because I think, you know, everyone being tied down to when the sun come up and come down, you got to like pick and choose. Like you got to stop what you're doing and not get to like hang out with your friends and do other things. I think that's going to make it so everyone on a lot more even playing field and they don't feel like they got to work all the time. That's going to drive the prices down because you're not competing against multi-millionaire Hanto and stuff. The second thing though is I don't think there's enough people that get to try to start their business. We got all these like property that abandoned. Like why? I think that the city should be able to lease that out and let people like start their locksmithing business and share the pay with the city to pay for those locations because the more business there is the more vibrant the city is and more opportunity for people instead of just working for the state thank you Uh, going forward, I think we need to make sure that everything across the board is kind of balanced out. So we don't want people to kind of flip flop. We want people to do what they, they want to do. RGB if you want to do sanitation, subs. obviously that should be your job that if that's what you want to do, 
it should pay the equal amount as any other job. So going forward, we want that to be the same for every single sector. If you want to do D6, if you want to do crime, you want to do lumbering, you want the payout to be the same to, to make it feel like you are earning the same amount as everyone else. As for businesses, we do want people to branch out. Uh, we don't want people to be locked down. If you want to start a new mechanic store, mechanic shop somewhere else, obviously we want that to happen. As of right now, I feel like the mayor's office has done what they could. To the people that don't know, a lot of these business proposals are already approved, but are being reviewed by another party. So, but we want to keep that going. It's not that you cannot get a business. We want businesses to go, but right now it's limited in terms of what we can do. We do support everyone wanting to do their own thing. And I feel like we should do the same going forward. So. I hate my life. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what are the uh, the main complaints about uh, our current administration has been? Where, where are the businesses? What's going on with those? What's happening? Um, I, I, I have to say this to everyone, basically, the... You hear that honking? Everyone. <laughs> Not sure it was life. <laughs> um, okay, let me let me ex let me explain the process that must be done in order to get a business. One, you submit it to the 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 mayor's office. Two, I have to submit a, after we review that. I have to submit that to the chief justice, and then after that. I need to, it needs to be submitted to the state, and then after that, it goes back to the Chief Justice, and then after that, it goes back to me. Uh, right now, we are at step three, i.e. it goes to the state. Um, my wife and I have worked hard and diligently in order to ensure that everyone who has an entrepreneurial spirit has had their business reviewed, be it for approval or denial, in order to then be pushed along in that process, because that is a, a big part of what's missing for the actual growth of Los Santos is giving the actual people of Los Santos the ability to operate out of these buildings, like Mr. Miller said, uh, with the with the machinery that they need, with the products that they want to make. Uh, and I have some news about that. <clears throat> uh, for for quite a bit of time, the Council of Eight considered making these businesses something that felons would not be able to enjoy, uh, in order to reward people who were uh, clean. Uh, citizens of Los Angeles, which is a feat in of itself. Um, however, I am pleased to inform you that in the future there will be opportunities for felons to own businesses like, for example, uh, a record label. Uh, you know, they don't produce like an actual product, right? But per se, like an actual like um, like food or you know furniture or whatever. But you know, it's still a place for people to maybe get back on the right track and to still enjoy that economic prosperity while simultaneously um, rewarding people who are clean in order to give them different, it basically different access to the business circuit uh, within Los Santos. Uh, long story short, uh, term two for me is going to be focusing on getting that rolling in order to allow people to uh, truly prosper in Los Santos. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that was a hard one. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, and again, as we're doing the snake format, we'll start with uh, Max on this next question. Uh, question is going to be, um, the city council has heard a number of uh, requests recently related to the well-being, pay, you know, maintenance and other things related to first responders. Uh, what are your thoughts on the state of, uh, you know, EMS, PD, the first responders out on the front lines dealing with the city when it's on fire, both literally and figuratively? Max, you're up first. Uh, for a long time, First, uh, first responders were in a bad spot, and I would say that they still are in a bad spot. 
Um, I think that working EMS, for example, is probably one of the most uh, unre- not unrewarding, but uh, most thankless jobs in Los Santos. And in order to compensate for that, when I was imbued with the the powers by the state to do so, I pretty much instantly raised their pay. I think EMS is getting uh, thirteen hundred dollars per hour right now, which is uh, more than doctors, more than lawyers, more than city council, uh, more than deputy mayor. Uh, I myself right now, uh, courtesy of my fiscal policy, which is, you know, minimum work, maximum pay for you guys. I'm actually making one dollar an hour right now. (laughs) Um, As for first responders, um, my wife and I, have uh, my chief of staff, have flirted with the idea of, you know, trying to really tackle the inherent problems at the uh, the LSMG. That's the Los Santos Medical Group. Uh, Those are doctors, EMS. Uh, to figure out, uh, there, recently there was a resignation from a longtime uh, EMS chief and her girlfriend, who was the deputy chief, I guess. Uh, I will say right now that EMS as a uh, whole is fortunate to have uh, Mr. Happy leading them right now. Uh, he's a good man. I've spoken to him quite a few times. He's on duty a lot. Uh, his deputy's cool, too. Um, right now, what first responders need most of all is to, we need to respect their work and to ensure that they feel like their role in Los Santos proper is something that is is valued by everyone else because it oftentimes is something that is overlooked or taken for granted. Uh, I myself uh, have taken it for granted quite a few times. Um, I believe that one way that we as a group, uh, should you be interested in taking this challenge with me, is to uh, stop with the self-transport uh, it is dangerous. Uh, it, technically, it's illegal. It's reckless endangerment, which is a felony. Um, and that alone, you know, provided that there are enough EMS on duty, uh, will most certainly empower them to feel like they're actually out there making a difference. Um, as for the police, uh, who are also first responders, I did draft up the uh, the controversial controversial uh, police con- continuity plan, which was a plan to finally give the LSPD some actual outside oversight instead of uh, hiding in their little cockroach holes waiting for the state to come down on them with a hammer when they finally fucked up enough times visibly for the state to come down on them. Uh, And it is with that power that the mayor's office has uh, finally given them the oversight that they need in order to ensure that they have the tools that they have to succeed. I still remember a a meeting that I had with uh, all three of the LSPD captains the night before I put this up to the council vote, Uh, the PCP, that is. Uh, And I remember uh, hearing Brooke Ruth suggest treason to me because she was uh, she suggested overthrowing the Council of Eight in order to uh, combat my idea that there would be any entity in the government that would provide oversight for the LSPD, Uh, which, of course, was so disgusting to me. I kicked them all out of my office, uh, went to the council room the next day uh, and got the PCP passed in order to. Uh, I began attempting to correct uh, all of the blunders that they, these three captains had essentially done. Um, Ruth instantly <laughs> and without apology stopped signing on to duty because she was under investigation for treason. Uh, Turner, who had been absent for a whole month, uh, did show up briefly and continued to basically not show up and then eventually resign himself. Um, And the reason they did this is because in that meeting, good citizens of Los Santos, they told me to my face, uh, Mayor Max, it's going to take six months to have a functional chain of command. Six months from that day that I was speaking to them. And it was then that I knew that the PCP was something that was required uh, so that I could give the good cops of the LSPD the opportunity to be realized for their talents instead of fucked around by a bunch of power-hungry megalomaniacs who could not understand and admit that their attempt at a a a triarchy had just completely failed not only themselves, but the people of Los Santos. Uh, I look forward to continuing to working with the first responders, uh, the police included. Uh, Thank you for listening. I I agree with a lot of things that Max just said. EMS as a whole is a thankless job and people do not seem to 
care too much about them. They are out there to try and save your life. They do come out when when you are in need, and people don't seem to to <laughs> realize that. Uh, I did. I talked to a, a few people not too long ago about going on a ride along because one one thing is hearing it from EMS and hearing it from people that how bad it is to go and do your job, but another thing is is going out there and experiencing it. Because people don't seem to realize that we we need EMS, we need them to save our life. When you when you go out there and you hit a local and you eat shit, they're there to bring you back and put you on your feet so you can go out back out there and, and do your thing. And for some reason, people just do not they, they take it for granted. They just they shit on the people actually out there saving your life. It, it goes for both EMS. It goes for doctors too. That you you go to a hospital they are there saving your life and you're like i i don't want to be here which is fair because nobody wants to be in the hospital the hospital is not a nice place to be but they're they're there to try and save your life they're trying trying to make your life better and i feel like people need to realize that i do still plan even if i do not get elected to go out and ex experience this and and just see how it is to be an ems in terms of the pd like max said they were in a rough spot when we first got elected i think personally that they're in a better spot i think Aww. they're not perfect as of yet i think there's still things that can't be improved uh i i don't think it's as bad as, as bad as it was a few months ago but there's still, definitely still a lack. The problem is also that PD as a whole is also a thankless job that people. <laughs> this guy will explain. They, they shit on the this PD. guy will so explain there's something. A, there's a turnaround, which is not something that, that we want. We want people to stick around. Sentences. We want people to enjoy their, their job. We want people to not f uh, lose interest. Because the issue is that as of right now, people get their job. Somebody else has to teach them that job, and then somebody falls out. They have to carry and take over that person's doggy boy like issues and 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 workload, and it just keeps being an issue that keeps accumulating, and we just never get to that point that we want to be. But we want that. There's something Thank that you, I boy. definitely want to improve going forward is that people want to go to go to work, and do their job and not have people shit on them all day basically so kick w dude for the first responders yeah <laughs> um, um, uh, i'm going to break it into the two different parts as well let's start with ems uh ems should not be having to fight and struggle to like fix their uh ems ambulance because they already have a hard enough job. I think first off, state should be paying for that. Not them having to pay from their pocket. Because they're <laughs> the ones that are truly trying to save our life every day. Secondly, they need to have a helicopter so they can save people that <laughs> get injured on like Mount Tiliad. So they're not trying to kill themselves. Trying to climb up there with their ambulance and stuff. The third is, I think one of the biggest problems that even the civilian have when it come with the EMS is EMS go all the way to Polito and someone they get there and there's no body because that person probably waiting there for 15 minutes wondering if EMS gonna come or not and that's not on the fault of the EMS or the person that had to be washed to the hospital by their friend because they don't want their friend to die so I think the biggest investment outside of the ambulance and the and the helmet chapter is a better like system where the person who calling 911 can know that somebody actually coming so that way they know not to leave and they're not having to guess whether they got to take the you know the um you know call the the secondary local ems or whatever you want to call it dude. um now let's move on to the other thing ems saving lives but there is a problem i'm gonna disagree with the two the police department was today than it ever has been dude some of these police officers are like children that need a babysitter to beat them over the head 
<laughs> they have lost their complete discipline. They are shooting people without any reason. I want to point you at a court case from two days ago in which they shot up myself. They shot me, hands up without a weapon, in my hand while I was in the highway. And when the judge said, you wrong and paid me $20,000 for them trying to murder me, the response by one of the captain was, maybe I should shoot him in the head instead this time, dude. <laughs> and I think some of you in the audience probably already also experienced this. You're just trying to do your job, doing your grime, doing your tow truck, and the police come and they treat you like a criminal. You're not even doing anything illegal. I have videotapes that will be released of interview from various police officers. It's going to be released in the next 48 hours. Some of them are going to shock you. In one instance, when asked, why is the mass murder of one police officer who killed, who shot at his own cops yesterday, why was he only charged with small crimes when others who have shot cops have been given so much? The answer was, those other people are criminal scumbag. But this guy, he a cop, and he just messed up a little bit. You're <laughs> going to see another video of a officer who pulled a gun on a civilian. And when asked, why did that happen? The answer was, they were just having a bad day. These people, these police, they work for us. They, things need to change so they know they work for us, dude. And finally, in order to compensate for the anger they got, I will put a program in place where the people of Los Santos will pick, instead of these bonuses that they get because they working a scoreboard and trying to stack charges just to like win some points and more paycheck, instead the people are going to vote who the best cop of the week is and they're going to get a turbo, dude, because we know that's what the police love. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I do need to uh, just point out, and uh, you know, in fairness to your understanding as the public and the other candidates up here, uh, most people in the inaugural city council uh were in favor of the concept of an ems helicopter at some point uh that was raised in the first week or so all of us were. Uh, <laughs> yes um, I, i'm just being safe by saying you know most if not all uh, were in favor of it uh the issue is is that uh currently the way that it is set up for pd and ems uh they kind of uh, keep what they kill so to speak so much like you guys out there who are not given a budget for your social group or whatever else you take part in, uh, PD and EMS only make their own salaries. And if they want to upgrade their equipment, buy better cars, things like that, uh, they would do so the same way any of you do. Uh, so the state has effectively uh, decided against issuing them large purchases like a helicopter, for example. Uh, that being said, uh i have another question for the panel starting with uh mr miller there that's silly no it's not bro um, so <laughs> what is your overall approach to fiscal policy uh and what would you do to ensure the state budget stays balanced and before mr miller comes up here i will offer some context here uh in addition to what i've just said about pd budgets you know ems budgets uh the way that it currently works in our economy is that all government salaries, so all pay everything that would be given out to PD, including potential budgets or anything like that, uh, it is all derived through tax revenue. Uh, there is no magical pool of money where the state will just, you know, sell off bonds and, you know, give us a cash infusion. If the state account hits zero, we're all fucked. Uh, so, you know, that in mind, how would you approach fiscal policy to make sure we don't hit zero uh, and end up in another crisis? Mr. Miller. Um, yo, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know what the fuck he just said, dude. All I know is we trying to get those paychecks and trying to be fair in how much money we getting. Okay, like fiscal, what the fuck, dude? Like, listen, dude, like we get the paycheck at the bank. We work hard. 
and if people need the money, like I'm sure like there's people that can like figure out what the heck these words mean and you know put I'm gonna put the export in place that can help balance all that, you know, instead of using these complicated words that, you know, just make things sound complicated but probably a hell of a lot simpler. Thank you. <laughs> We want to make sure that the the government still has a as a budget as a whole um as something like i said earlier we want to make sure that everyone is enjoying that work that they do so if if our budget is running low obviously we would make the changes that promotes a a healthy work-life balance but keeping it in a way where people can choose what they want to do so if you still again want to work sanitation you want to work G6, you want to work Rhyme, we make sure that you're still getting paid the same amount so you can keep that job. At the same time, we have been trying to promote events across the board. So if you do, if you do want to go out, you want to make an event, uh, all you have to do is basically just make sure that you note down your expensive expenses and we will make sure to give you the money back. That is something that I want to do going forward as well because events is something that does drive the city. Having people doing concerts, uh, whatever else you really can imagine, is something that we do want to promote. So that is something that we still want to keep there. But we also want to make sure that, again, you, you do the job that you want to do. We don't want to force you to do G6 if you are a person that is currently doing crime. We just, again, balancing it. Making sure that everyone is getting paid the same. Making sure that everything is, is balanced across the board. Thank you. Hi. Uh, right now, my fiscal policy, as previously stated, is less work, minimal work, maximum pay. Uh, I have been reinvesting the state's funds into ensuring that people who work uh, civilian jobs are being rewarded as much as is possible. This includes, uh, you know, stuff like senior bonds and stuff. Um, now, like Mr. Alan Crane said, huge fucking problem if that uh, that budget goes into uh, zero, because that means you guys no longer start getting paid. Uh, however, fortunately for all of you, I have done extensive testing with people from all over Los Santos in regards to these jobs. I've observed the trends and I have seen what needs to be done, when it needs to be done. Uh, right now, we are in a spending phase. This is to ensure that everyone is able to recover along with Los Santos economically, uh, and I foresee that being the case for the next couple of months uh, at minimum. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Uh, you know, I had some other questions written down, but to be honest with you, uh, I think I've heard enough of the typical uh pitches and you know stances and all that political shit uh, i'd rather hear you guys ask some questions so uh if we could form sort of like a line towards the front here if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask of the candidates or a specific candidate uh feel free to uh do so up at the microphone there just one at a time thank you mm -mm -mm -mm. hello can you hear me yes sir mm, yep yeah okay i have one question for the candidate what are we going to do to stop the blue on blue violence? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, which... Are you talking about the, uh, the cop yesterday that shot Captain Slacks in the face six times? Yeah, what are we going to do about the PD so they stop shooting each other? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure this has, like, never happened before. <laughs> like, Is it ever. Is happen again? Uh, I mean, he's in, he's in prison, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And he got fired, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, no, okay. probably not. Okay, well, actual question, okay? I just wanted to stir with you. Okay. When are you, when are you going to abolish Dogtown, and when are you getting rid of it? Um, I don't know. Uh, I know you guys have some, uh, some vocal concerns about Dogtown. Uh, I certainly am annoyed to pieces by Bobby Charles on... 
Bobby, it's a mayoral debate. Hey, off the stage. Get him on the fucking stage. Bobby. Bobby. Uh, you know what, Bobby? Bobby, what are you doing? Oh, well, uh, just speak, speak for a moment, Bobby, please. Hey, 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 can everybody hear me on here? Hey, hey, guys, 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 you know. Where's Lenny at? Where's Lenny when you need him? Don't call him. Guys, you know, what's with all the concerns about my beautiful dog town? What's with all the concerns about dog town? The concern is you. When you and Carmine with your guns, we get sent up and you gun us down like dogs. You make fun mm. of oh, 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 oh. You're wrong, Dundee. You don't get gunned down like dogs. You get dun gunned down like maggots, Dundee, because that's what you people are. You never <laughs> learn. You're going to keep getting gunned. You're going to keep getting gunned down. <coughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're not going to do nothing. And you're going to get sent. Fuck you, Bobby hey, Jones, you piece hey. of shit. Call me a maggot one more time, Bobby. Look at him. You Look at him. Not even real before. Not even reformed, they leave my penitentiary so so rebellious. Alright. Ahem. Um so listen. We all know Carmine and Bobby kind of a bit, dude. And they probably power tripping in Overdale. Uh I gotta use this opportunity, like listen, dude. Like uh I think if you facing a lot of time in prison and you don't want to spend time with them, I think people, uh, people that be facing charges should be given a option to do like probationary work for like sanitation or some alternative. Cause not every sentence should require you to have to deal with sitting and dealing with these guys in prison for God knows how long. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Thank you. Just beat Bobby's ass and uh, Carmine's ass. Wait. Who beat their ass? Right now? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 Oh, it's me, Matt Rhodes. Hi, Matt Are you speaking Rhodes. into the micro microphone, Matt Rhodes? Can you speak in the microphone? I think if you stand up on the stage, we can... Yeah, come, can up, come up on the stage and ask him. The stage. Oh, I picked it up. Oh, no. yeah, come up on just stage. Just come, come up on stage. All right, yeah, I'll do that. No, no, I'm not stealing. I'm not stealing. Um, I'll, I'll hand it back to someone. <clears throat> can, wait, can you hear me? Let me yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone can hear you when you're on stage. We can there hear we are. Perfect. Can so, uh, hello, DeMayer. Hi. Matt Rhodes. I have a question regarding something you said earlier. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. In other news, yeah. um, earlier today you had mentioned that uh, you only get paid a dollar an hour? Uh, yeah. Okay, now is that something, was that just like a talking point or like? No. Was that something you did like very recently? Uh, I've been getting paid a dollar uh, probably for like the past two and a half weeks and that's that's courtesy of the way that I've uh, directed the state funds currently to uh, pay better for basically everyone else in the city. Got it. What was your pay prior to? Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> it's it's like it's not. I, I get paid based on how well the uh, the budget is doing. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Wait. So, so let me get this straight. Let, let, uh, let, let, me, let, let, let me explain this to you very, very, yeah, very, ahead, very carefully. Ahead. If if the state is making a lot of money at the expense of everyone in the crowd and you, uh, that extra money gets funneled into the mayor's paycheck. That's just the way that it works. <sighs> ah, okay. Uh, last question. If you had to sort of uh, guesstimate how much money you've earned within your term, do you know how much that would roughly be? Um, probably over the last three months, probably about like a hundred and fifty thousand, probably, ish. Got it. Okay. I guess, I guess that really isn't wasn't my last question. How, how do you afford one of them carbonizers? Uh, I took out a loan. <laughs> Ooh. 
How much was the car? Uh, two hundred seventy thousand dollars. Mm, okay. Ish. All right. Are you are you my accountant, Rhodes? No, no. I was just curious. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, whether or not you're good with money or anything, or should be in charge. Uh, Shut up. Well, I, I, I'm 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 quite good with money, and more more than that, my uh, my wife, uh, former judge Siobhan Thoroughbred, is has a master's in finance. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hi. All right. Hello. All right. Is it safe to assume that this is a package deal? If you were to be the mayor, would she be, still be the chief of staff? Of course. Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, that's the only questions I got for now. Okay. Did this motherfucker just interrogate your ass? Like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to my life. <laughs> Welcome to my life, dude. What you mean? <laughs> it's my everyday, dude. Uh, hello. Can everyone in the crowd hear me okay? What up? Okay, okay. awesome. Uh, hello, everyone. Name's Silas. Silas Moreno. I have a question for Mr. Thoroughbred. Mm -hmm. There was a recent incident where your Carbonazar was towed in front of City Hall yeah. as a result of an illegal park. Right. You, and... You're the one who flagged it. <laughs> I did not flag it, no. Okay, sure. Norman Adams didn't tell you to flag my car out in front of City Hall? Uh, no, I didn't flag it. Okay, sure. Uh, if I can continue my question. Yeah, please. Go on. Okay. <laughs> in the following days after that tow, multiple tow workers reported that their wages were cut by roughly 10 to 15%. Uh -huh. Can you clarify as to whether these two incidents are related at all? And if so, whether that goes against your campaign motto of less work and more pay uh so for a long time the uh and this this kind of goes back into what i was talking about with uh with testing uh the new powers that were imbued to me by the state towing at one point accounted for uh all uh, group six and grime combined was less uh it, it cost less to pay them out from the state budget than towing alone uh, and in order to stop the horrible hemorrhaging that was happening to the state account because there was some sort of error on the back end that was causing it to be basically charged like two times uh, or way more than it was supposed to be, uh, I did drop towing uh, almost immediately down once I realized that. So basically the way that the, it worked is at first I could not control towing pay. Uh, then I could control towing pay. And then I saw, oh God, towing is costing the state $10 million in seven days compared to the $7 million of Group 6 at Grime, I'm going to drop that immediately. Uh, and the 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 tow pay actually um, was dropped uh, well before I uh, had my car towed out in front of City Hall by you and Norman Adams and uh, Ophelia. <laughs> I can confirm, since I have access to the same things, that the sliders or anything hasn't been changed for ever. It's been the same across the board. I did raise towing today, though, uh, from 75% of normal to 100%, so... Hooray! <laughs> I retract my statement. <laughs> Great. Thank you for answering my question. I appreciate it. Ain't no problem. <clears throat> Is that Chris King? Hold my hey, hand, hey, Daddy. Hop on up. Yes. What's up, boys? Are we are we are we loud already? Are we loud? Is that uh -huh. is, is that Zolo? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What up, Zolo? Um, what's up? What's up, Max? What's your uh, what's your guys' question? Uh, I have a question for Tugs and uh, for the current mayor, but I'm gonna let Z get his shit on. Okay. Yeah, I have a question for this like 19 year old because <laughs> I want to know if he knows shit type shit, you know? Um, yeah, I got you, dude. Can you guys all in the crowd hear me, dude? Just like wave your hand. Like you just don't yeah. care. Yeah, what that dollar? Um, I kind of, I'm kind of curious. Like, what's uh, what's the pay for jobs gonna look like? And what do you, what do you have like planned for that? Absolutely, dude. Like, okay, the like the question like way before with the the fiscal. I don't even know what the fuck words they were using, but like or the like the pay goes up and down or whatever the fuck. All I, I can tell you this. Uh, I work G six. Tier one, tier two, tier three, with a lot of my G6 friends, like Alexander and Blondie and a bunch of the other cool people, dude. Um, I've also worked all the way up uh, in the last month doing grime and rusing 60 weapon a week and building it back up. 
I've done toe twerking. Um, I've even done a little bit of sanitation. Uh, my point being that I've had a lot of experience with a lot of the jobs, and I know what how each <laughs> job have its own struggle. You can look at some of the numbers and be like, "Oh my God, why making so much money, dude?" But I also understand that why, for example, the that people losing entire days worth of work just because the the I don't know the get they won't take the package or something, and then all the repair costs that come with it. So I'm sure it's easy to just look at these like numbers and make it think that one job making more than another, but I know the reality is a lot more complicated. And so not only with my experience that I got from working myself, but also by relying on people like Alexander Bwandi, the people in the tow, the people doing the guime, um, that the amount people making going to be based on how much it costing them to do the work in the first place okay i appreciate that answer thank you my turn what <laughs> oh uh and yeah yeah and guys um whoever wins mayor gets a mayor song let's i'm just putting that out there from now you know get like the best like song in the city. fire all right go ahead chris all right i got a question for mayor dabs currently sir a long time ago, I was injured. I was hurt. Mm -hmm. A cop accidentally hit me, but I remember you stopping in the middle of your day to see if I was all right. You <laughs> kneeled down to me. You said, sir, just because you might be a criminal doesn't mean I don't care and I'm here and you gave me care. Are you going to continue to give the care that you gave to me <laughs> to the rest of the people of the city? The care that you know damn well that we deserve? Because I, I just want to make sure you're still going to do it. I, uh, the thing that really gives me joy these days is meeting new people and talking to them and helping people just like you, Mr. King. And it, it is my express pleasure to do so at every given opportunity. I'm always in the Yellow Pages. I'm always at City Hall. Uh, contact me. Call me. Beep me. If you want to reach me, I'm about to answer your phone, dog. <laughs> I know. You're always there. <laughs> and talks. A man of great honor, 19 years old and standing strong. I know you to be a man of the streets and a man of knowledge. Will you hold everyone accountable in the police that a man could go and grab something from the grocery store and not be profiled just because he might want to steal some chips? These <laughs> cops are crazy. How will you control and put these motherfuckers in their place? I think the biggest lack that police have is basic professionalism because I don't think they know what that word mean. I think that if you are not actively believed to be doing a crime, they don't have like the evidence for it. If they coming up to you, harassing you, profiling you because what they think you might have done or what you think they might be involved in, those motherfuckers need to be pull out and thrown off the duty dude because they're the ones that creating the criminal and Little making night. people do things <laughs> that they otherwise would not do because they don't feel protected they feel under attack oh my mm. god you hear it today guys and i just want to say i'm puerto rican and the latino community is with tugs and mayor dab yay <laughs> yeah hooray <laughs> Oda way! Let's go! Uh, Uriel, you're up next. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Whitlock. Uh, yeah, my name is Uriel Whitlock. Uh, just for my benefit and the rest of the citizens of Los Santos, uh, could you all please share your combined combat levels? And also your fishing levels <laughs> in RuneScape. Uh, 105, almost 106, and my fishing level is 71. <laughs> Mike? Uh, <laughs> 100. <laughs> and my fishing skill is <laughs> non existing. <laughs> oh. What the heck is a wound scape? <laughs> All right. 
answers <laughs> everything for me. Thank you. Thank you, Uriel. <laughs> uh, Turgle, I think you're next. What up? <coughs> what up? Hello. Uh, hi. This is a question for Michael and the other guy. Since Max answered this already, who would the chief of staff be for you guys? In, in my case, that would be uh, Jenny Hall. If Jenny Hall refuses to take the position, it would probably be Siobhan. Hello. Okay. Uh, for me, it is very important that these seats that be opening, uh, whether it's uh, on this board of eight people, whether it's the uh, advisory stuff, that those people is around. So the way that I would like to do this is I would give a four day window where people can show their interest and those that I feel have the most like passion to do it and the experience would be taking that position. So you don't have like anyone in mind all right. at all? Or... I think there's plenty of people, some that I know, some that I have yet to meet and hopefully meet after this event that can fill that position. So I would open that up. Word. All right, so he got no plan. I see. Uh, <laughs> one more question, quick, for Max. Um, when are we going to get skateboards in the city? You guys want skateboards, bro? Yeah! Uh, yeah, we yeah, fucking I, do. I promise I will petition to the state to import skateboards. Um, and they won't be signed by Bam Margera, which makes them even cooler. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's great. Alright, that's all my questions. <laughs> uh, next, sir. What's your name? Uh, Bringle Dingus. Bringle Dingus. Well met. Uh, what's your question? Uh, so you talked about already about how, like, the, the EMS already get paid, like, a lot more than everybody. Yeah. But there's still like extended periods of time where you can call for EMS help and there's nobody around to right. actually help. Because being an EMS, it it's fucking hard. sucks. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. So outside of just, you know, increasing the amount of money that's being paid to the EMS, what do you guys plan on doing to actually improve the lives of the EMS so that people are like, you know, actually, you know, being EMS? Um, one way to do that is to kind of probe uh, for, cause you know, they spend a lot of time in their ambulance, um, uh, making that driving experience more comfortable in the form of, and, and I'm not, once again, like the chief justice said, I'm not proposing that the state pay for brand new vehicles for them, but you know, uh, putting out the feelers stateside in order to determine, you know, what is going to be available to them to make their job more engaging and more exciting. Uh, I think that's probably the biggest issue. Um, yeah. That's about it. I mean, just to find something else for them to cruise in and then uh, help them uh, by way of my fiscal policy of, like you said, making sure they get paid basically more than everyone else in the city uh, so that they can easily afford that stuff and get out there on the street. My, I'm up next. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think the primary thing is just making sure that people realize that we need EMS. We need to make sure that they... they enjoy their job making ems and the doctors hate their life isn't improving anything for us they're out there to save you they're 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 there to get you back on your feet making their life hell is i i feel like it's counterproductive and i don't understand why people do it like ems has never done anything to you they're there to help you and I feel like that's how it should be going forward, is that we, we, we need EMS. If they, True. if, like, if we, so they don't need us. I guess they kind of do because it's their job, but at the same time they can refuse. If you're being a piece of shit, why would they help you? I, people need to realize that we need them, they don't really need us. And I, I support EMS because, again, they've saved my, my life multiple times. Um, <clears throat> like, look, I can, like, say, yo, we need EMS 
but most of the people in this crowd probably had their friend put them in a vehicle and drive them to the hospital instead of waiting. That the solution is not getting everyone to be like, yo dude, we got to love the EMS and get in the ambulance. We need to make people want to use the ambulance. And that means get them the helicopter so they can get to the people quicker. Didn't we even need listen to, like, to what he said. get them the medical stuff. So if you take the ambulance, maybe the ambulance can help, like, you know, patch you up a little bit by the time you get to the hospital. And the third, as I mentioned before at the beginning, is that when someone calls for EMS, there should be a way for that EMS to alert the person who 911 that they are on the way so they're not left there guessing whether they're gonna die bleeding out for 20 minutes or ambulance gonna come you don't speak the truth so of the debate that. i'm pretty sure they say ems en route if they're on the way i i think a better system than responding to the 911 it's not that he's not telling the truth it's that he is system, saying that after that alan not, went up and said uh, this is not possible <laughs> no had any have any feedback so while ems is doing what I, I think you you're best your power, you need the tools that going to make people want Barbecue to work Bob with you up. even more. I, just one quick follow up. Um, you said that, you know, everyone was in favor of getting EMS a helicopter, but, you know, you don't want to pay for EMS vehicles. But I don't understand why, because like there's a big no. difference between paying for like a group six vehicle and like paying for an ambulance. Let, let's be ambulance is for everybody. Let's be clear. Uh, it was state mandated that we would not use state funds to directly fund the police uh, and the uh, LSMG. That's just not right. that, that is how it is. That is how it's going to be forever. Uh, in order to compensate for this, pretty much almost immediately after I received the power to raise their pay, I did uh, to essentially give them a budget uh, so that we could compensate for, you know, in the past, them getting free vehicles and free, uh, like, you know, basically stuff right from the state funds. Can't you just like funnel a portion of their pay into like a pool so that they can use that to buy a helicopter? Uh, I would heavily encourage. Uh, anyway, in fact, that's what I tried telling the LSPD before I was gifted those powers was to you know work together. Uh, you may have seen one of them hop up on stage earlier in order to uh, grill me about my finances. Uh, that's Matt Rhodes. Uh, he did that because I grilled him about his finances and asked him, you know, how come in, in this brotherhood of the LSPD it's so hard for you guys to fathom maybe pooling your money together to get new vehicles and stuff to uh, make it easier to do your job. Um, I don't know how the EMS feel about that. That said, they shouldn't have to worry about that because I've raised their pay to such a level that that level of cooperation probably will not be necessary, except for maybe potentially in the case of a helicopter, which will probably be, if, if it will ever be available, millions of dollars. <clears throat> okay, cool, thanks. No problem. Thank you, Bringle. Um, wind song. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sad dude. Yes. Shit, what was I gonna ask you? Oh yeah. Um, do you take any super packs or special interest money? No. <laughs> okay. You other guys? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 have to, I have to be honest, and I need to ask what that means. A super PAC is a, uh, a, a essentially a group of lobbyists that will typically give politicians money to promote their ideas. Uh, we don't. <laughs> there's no super PACs here, Woods. No. <laughs> there's not. I don't think no. so. <laughs> no, there's not. <laughs> I mean, I gotta I... make sure though, because I want you to like respond to us, not like some rich guy. Yeah, of course. And also, um, how will you help? artists and musical talent in the city who are uh you know flipping burgers and shit um the musical talent i think there's a lot of it in the city and uh you know i know it can be very difficult for artists to be struggling and there's a lot of them like you you know there's a bunch of stuff popping up on the chart right now dude it's getting spicy and hopefully it continue to be spicy um and I think, um, you know, the easy solution would be like, obviously concert where people pay. But um, I, honestly, the best answer is, I think working with the artist and finding a way to empower them, probably the right move. Maybe like a radio station. I don't know. Dude. 
Uh, I think in terms of like having uh, festivals and concerts, having the state fund that is, is something that I want to do for sure. Because we we had people submit and and 